It is a commonly known fact that every year cell phone cameras are getting better and better. Phones are now getting closer to the look of a digital SLR and can match them in similar ways. My Google Pixel 4 is capable of doing low light photography and even astrophotography now, which is mind blowing to me. But even though phone cameras are only getting better, they can never seem to reach the image quality of an interchangeable lens camera. But why is that? Now before I go any further, I just want to explain how this video is not to hate on phone cameras or to disown any phone photographers, but it's more to explain why your cell phone just doesn't look as good as a real camera. Sensor size is the number one reason why cell phones can't reach the capabilities of a real camera. Let me explain. Traditionally, film cameras would use 35mm film strips. This today became the blueprint of what we call a full-frame sensor, that have a 35mm sensor in them. The problem with that is that camera manufacturers noticed how a sensor with such a large size needed lots of processing power. So to cut down on costs and make more affordable cameras, they created a sensor that was half the size, that was cheaper to manufacture, and needed less processing power. Today, we call these APS-C. Now what they noticed though was that with a sensor half the size, there were also a couple of drawbacks. First was that any lens placed on the camera would now zoom in by 1.5 times. The second problem was that with the same aperture value, the camera would have less shallow depth of field or bokeh. And lastly, the image quality were noisier than the full frame 35mm sensors. The idea is that the smaller the sensor of the camera, the more these problems are present. Now there are a couple of things you can do to minimize these problems. Using a wider lens can compensate for the crop factor of the sensor. So if you wanted a wide angle 24mm lens, to get the same look you would need a 16mm lens on an APS-C sensor. Having a lens with a wider aperture can compensate for the lack of shallow depth of field. A lens with an aperture of f1.4 can give you an equivalent in bokeh of a full frame lens at f2. Plus, the wider aperture helps in low light, which was the last problem that smaller sensors had. So now the question is this, how big is the sensor on your phone? Well, let's just say it's not really big. So I have a full frame header crop factor of 1, which is good, and an APS-C header crop factor of 1.5, which is also good, then a phone would have an equivalent crop factor of 6.16, which is not very good. If we look at the metadata on Adobe Lightroom, to get a full frame equivalent of 27mm, the Google Pixel 4 needed a lens that was 4.38mm. Now it's not that a cell phone can't fit a super 35mm sensor on them. As you can see, there would be enough space for it. The problem is that one of the main selling points of a smartphone is its pocketability, meaning to say, it needs to be slim. Now with a big sensor you would also need a bigger lens, and that is where lies the problem. Now one of the ways camera manufacturers would compensate was to add a collapsible lens. But because of the importance of a slim design on a smartphone, that doesn't seem to be a possibility. This is an issue that point and shoot cameras didn't have, and that's how point and shoot cameras were able to fit 1 inch sensors in them. Another problem with phones is that because the lens is so limited in size, the lens cannot physically zoom in. This is not a problem with an interchangeable lens camera using a zoom lens. Because of that, phones need to stick to one focal length, which is usually something close to a 24mm full frame equivalent. This is what they call a prime lens, which means a lens that cannot zoom. Now usually the advantages of using a prime lens is that you get a wider aperture. And in the case of the Google Pixel 4, this is actually true. The Pixel has an aperture of f1.7, which is good. But because of the crop factor of the camera, even with such a big aperture, you still don't get much bokeh. This is my Sony a6600 using a lens at f1.7. And this is my Google Pixel with the same aperture. As you can see, the Sony has lots of shallow depth of field, while the Google seems to have everything in focus. The depth of field of the 6600 gives more of a 3D look to the overall image, while the Pixel looks flat in comparison. So for a prime lens, you are actually getting the worst of both worlds by being unable to zoom in and lacking the advantages of the shallow depth of field of a prime lens. Traditionally when filming, you want to keep a shutter speed that is double your frame rate. Now sometimes you might end up in a situation where there is too much light. This usually happens when shooting outdoors. So to fix this, people use ND filters to cut out on how much light is hitting the sensor. Now the problem is that phones aren't designed to have ND filters. So for the most part, when you see phone footage, the shutter speed is cranked up to get the right exposure. This leaves the footage jittery and unprofessional. 
On the other hand, if the phone is in a low light situation, then the images are very noisy because of the small sensor. Although it is possible to get the right amount of light that will get your shutter speed that is double your frame rate and with a low ISO, on a normal day to day basis you won't be hitting that sweet spot. So as we have discussed in this video, because of the sensor size of the camera and the limitations in size, phones now have three big problems. Number one is that they can't get a shallow depth of field. Number two is that they have a difficulty in low light. And number three is that they can't physically zoom in. Now what's crazy is that phones have already started to implement fixes for these. And so here comes the part where I explain to you why cell phones might be able to reach the capabilities of a real camera. So where cell phones can't physically reach the capabilities of a real camera, they compensate with software. To fix the shallow depth of field problem, they implemented portrait mode, in which the camera cuts out the subject and blurs out the background. This gives the effects of bokeh. To fix low light, they implemented the night mode, in which cameras take multiple photos and stitches them together to give you a bright and clean image. And to fix the digital zoom problem, they added more cameras with different focal lengths on them. So although it is physically impossible for a smartphone to reach the capabilities of a full-fledged interchangeable lens camera, they can still fake the basic effects of a digital SLR. And although phones can give you good results, real cameras will always have an edge over them just because of the fact that they can fit a larger sensor in them. But where real cameras are masters at image quality, phones are more like jacks of all trades master of none. But for master of none, it's still pretty impressive what they can do. 